make this fast. I'm going to make this fast. And the reason I'm going to make this fast is the time when I did my live, I have a live coding session. And when I, when I trialed it, it took me 45 minutes just to do half of it, which means that I need to really speed this up. So I'm going to try. I, I would love to be able to talk about everything that Asha does, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. However, I am very excited about this technology. Why? Because I'm a gray haired coder, which means I get excited about old school stuff. And what is more old school than HTML? Come on, man. Don't, don't steal phrases from my presentation. <laughs> oh, my God. We have a same slide. <laughs> Identical slides here. We do have the slide, slide but this is where I am. So uh, everybody, there's a lovely, lovely uh, article by Jason Miller and Adios Mani, which talks about rendering of the web, talks about the various approaches nowadays with all the different stacks we have available. And uh, the second one, got from going from the more traditional all the way to the more modern, uh, the second column here is static server side rendered pages. This is what we're going to be talking about. And why am I excited? Because we do work with modern technologies. We do work with server technologies. JavaScript is now officially on the server. JavaScript is powers production quality enterprise stuff on the server. It's no longer the, you know, the kind of like, what, JavaScript, seriously? No, just use something else. That doesn't happen anymore. But still, there's one technology that works everywhere. There's one technology, there's one, there's one language that irrespective of where you want to deploy to, whether it's an old shared hosting environment, whether it's Amazon S3, whether it's some mod, it, it will work everywhere even if you try it locally without a web server, and that's HTML. So I'm going to be talking today about a lovely, lovely uh, framework, library, tool called Astro.js, which is basically a static site generation tool. Um, and the reason I really like Astro, the, 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 I've experimented with many SSR uh, approaches. The reason I really like Astro is because of the opinion rainbow <laughs> okay so uh, disclaimer this is completely <laughs> everything you see in this slide is my own not so very humble opinion okay so please take everything with a, with a, with a pinch of salt now the opinion rainbow goes all the way from the i don't really have opinions about how to do technology all the way to i have loads of opinions how to do technology and the various tools libraries and frameworks that are available for us to use find themselves there so I'm, I'm sure that somebody out there has worked with Jekyll from the good old days of writing, which is kind of like the grandfather of SSR apps. And it's still amazingly powerful, but it resides a little bit towards the, it does have opinions. You know, you need to learn Ruby. You need to do stuff with Markdown files. Um, I don't know if you have any experience working with Hugo, which is an absolutely amazing, Hugo is, is, has been written using Go. And as an SSR, tool it's so fast that when you run the build tool sometimes it completes so fast that you think it's broken or that it hasn't done it i'm talking about sub 50 millisecond build speeds crazy but it has opinions of course next.js which technically it's not read i mean it does have an ssr approach but the i'm going to talk about it in a bit but the the export functionality of next.js will give you javascript which is and it it's very opinionated in exactly how it structures how it how how you need to lay lay your pages how you need to do lots of things and on the other side of the rainbow we have something like leventy which recently reached its version 1 uh, release which is another really really cool server side javascript based server side rendering tool but tries to cater for everything. It tells you, I don't really have any opinions about the tool you want to use, about how you want to write your code. You, you can use Pug, you can use Nunchucks, you can use any other, and you end up losing a lot of time trying to figure out exactly how to get the ball rolling. One of the reasons I liked Astro is because it kind of, I it found itself in the middle of that, of that, uh, you know, thing that I have in my mind about whether a tool should how how opinionated should it all be and so but why why am i why am i so excited about html i mean <laughs> um i it's there are so many use cases where you do not really need to implement something that is you know server side rendered uh, something that is like 
you know, a dynamic website with like this whole full stack. And the, the, over the years, here I have some examples of what I've encountered in my, in my career, where you don't really need to do anything more than just output some simple HTML pages. The most classic case has been when, when developing a new project, you need to output an HTML prototype, which is fine. You can just slice a design and implement it. But what happens if that prototype has two or three or seven pages that showcase different aspects? So before you connect it with your backend, maybe you want to showcase this. Maybe you want to you want to you want to have reusable components to render that prototype. You, you should not have to set up a create a React app, <laughs> you know, and just run it somewhere in order to be able to to quickly turn out five, six, seven, twenty static HTML pages. The landing and marketing pages, specifically when they have localization requirements. My career I found that sometimes we had to create very simple static pages, but then they needed to be in like seven languages. So that's like, you know, seven HTML files. You don't have to do them that they don't need to be dynamic. They they have there's no reason for them to to you just wanna you know, deploy them somewhere on S3, somewhere on Edge, on a CDN, somewhere and completely forget about them. But at the same time, you know, managing more than one or two HTML files at the same time without some sort of a centralized way to do that, it's annoying. Custom static wikis. There's, it's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. If, if your developers write Markdown documentation, why not create, why not just use that as a data source and bring everything and create a menu that you can search and you can you can list and you can navigate through all of that. Um, static pages on your website. How often does your press page or your terms and conditions page change? It's like like once a six months. You know, is there any reason whatsoever why it needs to be uh, dynamic? And and we're going to see the, 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 the example about blogs in a minute. On the right-hand side of this slide, by the way, you have all the deployed targets of Azure JS. Um, annoyingly, Amazon is missing from there, but you have at least four or five separate places in Amazon that you can deploy static HTML, all the way from a simple S3 bucket with public privileges to, I don't know, all the complex other stuff, EC2 instances, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I have... Let's see, I have 15 minutes. So I'm going to try very fast <laughs> to just show you why I'm excited about this. And I want to, what, my, my, my aim now is going to be to basically instanti instantiate an Astro build and like figure out how we can really quickly take something that is slow and dynamic and make it extremely stupidly fast and static. And what we're going to do then, <laughs> is we're going to use our blog. Yay. So um, for, uh, on our, <clears throat> on our um, grisjs.org is our WordPress blog. We don't really, we don't really, you know, like we, sh we should give it a little bit more love than what we're currently doing. I mean, we don't even have these events. That's, that's my mistake, by the way. I should have updated the blog. But uh, this is WordPress. And WordPress can be slow. WordPress can be a little bit difficult to manage. And... But we don't have any comments here. So it's just it's just a matter of the only interest we have from this page is just to convey information. Now, and the good thing about about hosting a blog in WordPress.com is that it gives you a REST API that you can export the the data. So this gonna be our this gonna be our target now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna very quickly siphon that data and see if we can see see how easy or hard it is to create a static thing. So very first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new directory and uh, <clears throat> can you see my, yeah, I think you can see my uh, my uh, my terminal window quite well. Yeah. The, the font should be large enough. Excellent. So, uh, oh my God, live coding, are you serious? And I'm just going to go inside here and we're going to start the process. So the only thing you need to start is just have a have a recent version of npm and you should be you should be ready to play ball so npm init astro and this is gonna bring us a lovely little you know dynamic thing that allows us to select we're gonna play for the purposes of this presentation with the so-called minimal layout there are loads of templates of course you know as like you you, you have you have templates that you can have it pre 
you know, he can create all the opinionated folder structure that Astro needs with Tailwind, with Bootstrap, with React, with Svelte Kit, with Vue, whatever. I just want to do HTML. So I'm going to start with the minimal template and it's going to uh, create some files. So there's already, um, there's already, um, we're going to talk about the file structure in a bit. Uh, I'm going to follow the next step, so I'm just going to do an npm install, which will probably take close to 20 seconds. So, should have had some music for this part here, just you know, background music playing. Um, and while this is happening, and why is it slow? Okay, other times it's a little bit faster. that yeah, on. Zoom live streaming won't help you there. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that's true. That should have should have finished a little bit faster. Anyhow, so um, 36 seconds, apologies about this. And what I'm gonna do is, it's worth mentioning here that whoever uses VS Code is in a much better position than I am. I, I'm really, I really like my web store. VS Code, however, does have a proper language server for Astro with auto completion and everything. It's gonna, it's gonna feel a little bit weird, but I'm, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use WebStorm because I'm used to this. So, what we're gonna do then is let's just move the windows here on the right hand side so we can see what's going on. And it says here, season Astro not delete this readme file and begin. Oh, so I might as well do that. I'm just gonna delete the readme. I'm gonna delete some um so the very first thing worth mentioning here is that Astro files have an extension of dot astro. And this is how the minimal template looks. And this is how an Astro component or page or whatever file is going to look. It has some HTML underneath and it has the so-called front matter part on the very top. Now, um, there are some NPM scripts that come with Astro. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the dev one, which is what you use when you are developing. And this basically behind the scenes starts VIT. Lovely, lovely. Uh, development, super extremely fast development server that I think Stratos gave us a little bit of uh, insight about in a previous meetup. Um, and when you visit, so there we go. That's it. Thank you everybody. No, I'm joking. So um, what we have here is we have the, um, the initial setup. We have the dev server working, hot module um, reloading is in place here and it's actually quite fast as well. Um, so you save and just it just it just plays ball. So what we're going to do now is very very quickly let's let's start figuring out. Yes. So first step, I I don't want to be because I'm I'm screen sharing now and I have this presentation. I don't want to be doing loads of async calls to fetch data and build data and everything. So what I'm going to do on this endpoint here, um, I'm just going to curl that and I'm going to download it. So what this is, what this JSON structure that you see here is basically the output of our GRIS.js blog. And it has the list of all our, of all our blog posts. So I'm going to curl that and I'm going to save it into blogdata.json. So it's going to download all of that. Let's have a look. I should have saved here. That's all well, let's format this so we know what we're doing. Excellent. And let's collapse a little bit. So yeah, that's just JSON. It has a body, it has a post ski, and then uh, it's an array in every one of those keys. It's just a blog, a blog entry, which is all fine. This is gonna be, our, for the purposes of this presentation, we're gonna work with a local JSON file. You can, of course, data fetch from anywhere to do what you want. You can create your own stuff. So, um, Let's 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 very quickly let's consider what we want to do here. I think uh, let's go in the. Um, I think most probably we need the very first thing we do is we need a navigation. So we are probably gonna have this gonna be the home page, and we also gonna have an about us page. Maybe I think let's have a look. Yeah, that looks like. So let's go to whoop sorry. So let's have a look. So home page and about us. That kind of looks okay. So, and the um, next thing we're going to do is let's.
create some pages. So inside the, everything in Astro happens inside this folder. It is opinionated, similar to Next.js, similar to Hugo, similar to the other SSR tools. It's heavily opinionated on where you save stuff and what you do stuff. So if you want to create a new page, you go to source pages, right? I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it about.astro. And inside here, this is the about us page. I'm going to save this. So here, homepage is the root, and about us is slash about. Let's have a look. So there you go. We just created, um, that's nice. OK, that's cool. So <laughs> um, let's move on a little bit now to just start figuring out what we're going to do for each one of those pages. And one of the, um, Going back to the use cases I discussed before, one of the things you're going to be doing is basically you you probably need to have some shared components. You probably need the ability to reuse a little piece of code. Assuming you're doing a static HTML prototype that has like five or six or ten pages, you will need a menu bar, a header, something. So let's see. Let's let's go from the from the component level all the way to the layout level. So let's start from from reusing a little piece of code all the way to reusing something. So what I'm going to do is I want I want all both my pages. So this is my index page and this is the about us page. Um, it's worth noting here that if you right click and you examine the source, you're going to see that on the index page, you know, this is exactly what we have here. But if you go to this, to the about us page, that we only have an H1, and you examine, you will see that Astro has created all the wrap-up, all the, all the markup, all the, in order to have valid semantic HTML, which is a little bit confusing. So the, the, the thing I want to do before I do anything else, I want to ensure that like one of the things I could do is like just copy this and just paste here, and this is the About Us page. But if we do it this way, then we basically recreate and we basically duplicate in the code base. So um, let's let's see how we can start abstracting and creating some uh, some reusable components. The very first thing I'm going to do is I want to create a component for my navbar. So uh, you go into the source folder. Uh, there's a, you create a directory called components, and inside that, I'm going to create nav.astro. And I'm just going to remove this from here, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to save this. That's lovely. So now I need to bring that component in place. Um, how do I do this? So inside one of the lovely, lovely things, and the thing that the very first thing that for me, clicked when I started using Astro, is that on the front matter, so on the very top where you have those three dots, and in other SSR libraries like uh, like um, Hugo, for example, you have some, you can have data there or you can have props and everything. Here, you just write JavaScript. It's just JS. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say import nav from, by the way, there's no default export here. It's just you, you just you just import and you name it whatever you want to do it. So import nav from, and then I need to do to have the proper path. So I'm gonna go up on directory components slash nav dot astro. And here I'm just gonna reference it like as if it was a React JSX component. I'm gonna press save, and my component is in place. So um, we're so already you can see you can kind of use uh, uh, it's it's a subset of JSX. It's kind of like JSX, but it has some differences. There's a lovely page in the Astro documentation about what the differences between the React JSX and Astro JSX. But if you worked with React, most of the stuff you write in Astro will come naturally. You know, it will it won't feel alien. So I'm going to copy that nav component here as well, and. Let's let's paste it here. This is the about us page. I'm gonna put a little bit of lorem ipsum on the about us page because about us pages are always very. Whoa! I just broke something. Of course, I have not imported my components, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the about us page. So already, we have a first example of like how we can reuse components. And similar to React and JSX, you can actually have props. So here, 
when I'm on the on the homepage, I can say uh, current page equals home. And on the about us page, I can say current page equals about. Let's fix this. Sorry, I do not have, annoyingly, as I said, JetBrains, I do not have code formatting to do this fast. So here, I now have the ability to access, uh, props are accessible via a global namespace called Astrojog props. So let's see if this works. We are currently in, and similar to JSX components, if you want to output something that's dynamic, something that is basically needs to be interpolated, you use the um, Agistra, oh, just curly brackets, whatever. So astro.props, astro.props.current page. And there we go. So suddenly we also have, so, so far what we achieved is basically we have a very simple, quick, rudimentary component structure to work with. Everything's fine. Nothing impressive, nothing to write home about. It's worth mentioning that, and we have, we also have a lot of reusable, reusable um, code here as well. So very quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to showcase the concept of layouts. What is a layout? Um, for those of you that work with laid templates in Laravel or with uh, Ruby on Rails, uh, a layout is kind of like a wrapper. It, it can contain the common reusable uh elements you can import the layout and then you can just like add some it it can wrap the contents of your page so <clears throat> inside uh layouts i'm going to create my base layout.astro this is going to be a lovely uh html thing astro showcase and i'm gonna have um should i have a common heading maybe I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, just have an H1 and say Grease.js awesome Astro blog. Then I want the nav, the navigation bar to be reusable across my pages. So I might as well do the same thing here. Import nav from, and I need to go, I think one directory up slash uh, ba, 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 components slash nav.astro. That's all nice. And now in order to bring the data, this is like React children. Basically here you use, uh, it's called slot. I have no idea why it's called slot. It's not very, it's not very useful, not very clever. So what I'm going to do here for my homepage is I'm going to delete everything. I'm just going to import the base layout. Um, so the base layout goes layers, life base layout dot astro. It's very important to include the dot astro, otherwise oh, everything breaks. I don't know why this is happening. And so my, and now I'm just going to use it, base layout. Welcome to our blog. Whatever, let's just save that. And uh, let's delete that, that annoying thing. So now, as you can see, our, we even abstracted even more. We created a layout which just wraps inside the layout. We can have our heading, our footer, our everything. So already we have solved the first use case I showed you before. You want to create a quick HTML prototype? You want something that is fast, that works? You do this. Let's very quickly fix the About Us page as well. So delete all of that uh, uh, About Us and as we said, the About Us page has lots of uh, information. So we're going to add some lower ipsum. And there we go. So we have About Us and Home. Now, before we do anything else, this is the dev server. How does it look when we build it? How does it look when we export it? And this is the second push moment I had where I said, okay, this may be worth in investing a little bit more time. Because with Next.js, when I, when I wrote Next Export, was the time when I went, oh, for crying out loud, why does it have so much JavaScript? So let's go again to our NPM scripts and we're gonna uh, build. This runs in a separate thread and it says two pages built in 650 milliseconds. Now inside the destination dist, folder, distribution folder, you now have 
a static HTML page created for the home page and a static HTML page created for the about us. All links are relative if you want them to be, and that's it. Just HTML, it just works. Okay, so that's that's fine. So let's see, how long do we have? Is 20, 20, I have 10 minutes, don't I, Strato, or is it less? Okay, I have 10 minutes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try yep. and solve for the second use case. And this is the important use case. It's just basically fetch data, bring the data in. How do how do you make this and what how do you bring data? Do you like this is this is static? How do you how do you solve for this? So on our homepage, currently it says whatever. We don't want it to say whatever. We want to say, here's a list of our lovely blog posts. And underneath here. What we kind of want to have is maybe, you know, like 10 blog posts and all of them are like links that have some la 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 blog, some text. Okay, so, oop, that's wrong. Um, so blog post one and so on and so forth, blog post two. So this is kind of like the, the what we want to do. And, but this needs to be driven dynamically on build time. So the, the concept is that you're gonna run a command to, you're gonna run your you know, NPM run build and it's gonna connect to the blog, it's gonna download everything and it's gonna populate this page. Um, while there is a fetch API available, which is identical to fetch. Actually, you know what, let's, let's showcase the fetch API. Let's be, let's be, let's try and make it, you know, very quickly. So, um, uh, what I'm going to say is I'm going to Astro supports top level await, so you can you can you can just as I said write JavaScript, and the fetch API is supported. And inside here, I'm going to paste that big thing. Uh, typo, typo, typo. Const. Await fetch const cost const data. So and then I'm going to say const uh, actually const response. And then const data that equals await response to JSON. And of course, of course, as every one of us does it here, whether you admit it or not, I'm not going to do anything else here, but I'm going to say console.log data because we want to see if we actually manage to do this. How does console.log work in Astro? On the dev server, it's going to output on the console. On When you build it, it's going to output once on build time. So if I save here, and I refresh that page, come on, what you'll see is, where's my, oh, sorry, there you go. So uh, let me just, uh, sorry, I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna refresh the page again. So basically the fetch happened, the information was back and then I can iterate and I can output. However, as I said, why do this? Why, why? Because why not have a separate process that downloads the data somewhere? You know, maybe you can write some some proper Node.js JavaScript that does that and populate a JSON file, and then you use that JSON file to hydrate this. Remember, we already did this. We created block data.json, and because Astro uses Vit, and Vit is amazing. So Astro import the supported imports from Astro are stuff that you're used to importing in other stacks. You can import JavaScript, TypeScript, JSON, there we go. Okay, so let's do that. Import data from, and I'm gonna go down two folders, and I'm gonna get blog data.json. And now I'm gonna console log the same thing. If I save this, if I refresh my page, there you go. So now the data gets loaded locally. You can have a separate process where you download everything. And of course, uh, the thing I'm interested in is data.body.posts. Sorry, apologies. There we go. So, oh, did I just read? Oh, for crying out loud. So there you go. It just iterates to the whole thing and it shows you everything. This is fine. I know I have the data in place. So how do I output the data? This is where Astro, this is where the React experience comes into play. You're basically doing the classic thing that you would do in a React component. You just map over the array and you output JSX. So you open, um, you open um, curly brackets. I always forget that. So data dot 
what was it again? Data dot, let's find, let's have a look at the, let's have a look for the dot JSON file we have, data dot body dot posts. Okay, so data dot body dot posts dot map. And each post needs to be output. So here, what we're gonna do, actually, we don't, we don't need that. Let's, it's an out of function, so might as well do it JSX style. So, and inside here, we have post dot title. Yay! So there we go. Suddenly we fetched all the data, we showed it, everything's fine, everything's cool. And so now, four minutes, this is gonna be really fast. Now the final thing is like, okay, this is nice, but you just fetched some static data and created the menu. How do you create pages for each one of them? Do you have to go and create like, how many of them are? 17 pages? Aha, no, why? Now comes the complex part. And now people that have experience working with Next.js and specifically the uh, the, hydra the client hydration part of that will see it and say, mm, okay, that's, that's a little bit similar. So let's, let's see how we're gonna do this. I want for each one of those posts to go to the posts forward slash and here what I'm gonna, oh, remember this is double quotes. Um, one of the problems with Astro is still haven't made it up very well about how, when it should escape HTML or not. So there are certain caveats when you're trying to do dynamic stuff. In this case, when you wanna create, um, similar with React, is like when you wanna create an attribute, you probably need to use curly brackets here and inside you need to use template literals. It's a little bit unwieldy and like meh, um, but I think they are making efforts to, to. So what I'm gonna do is if I save this, then you see that each one of those links now links to slash posts slash a dynamic ID. Well, it's not really dynamic, but it's an ID that changes. And here is how you deal with this. We're gonna go to pages and we're gonna create a new directory called posts and the astro page we're gonna create inside square brackets id dot astro. There are loads of different stubs you can use here and there are loads of different approaches you can use. But the, the, the caveat and the important thing here is that you need to, you need to follow that, that, that structure. Now, now comes the annoying part. So um, the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna import the, I don't need the data. I do need the base layout though, because I really want this to be common. So I'm gonna have the base layout and here I'm gonna say, this should be the title of the blog post. Here should be the description. Now, if I visit this page now, it's gonna give me an internal error. It's gonna tell me that get static paths is required. Make sure that you export the function, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, I don't understand. So an important thing to keep in mind, Astro is a static site builder. There's no Astro server to run. You do everything in build time. So here I have created a component that it's, um, it's, uh, it's stub is dynamic. What we need to do now is we need on the top, on the front matter of this component, we need to tell it all the data that it's gonna need and how to build it. Um, in order to make this a little bit, um, in order to make this a little bit fast, I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna quickly paste the code to do this. You need to export an async function called get static paths. And what you need to do, you need to also this component, you need to import your data. And what you need to do there is you need to return a very specific structure, an array of objects that have two keys, the params key and the props key that can have anything you need. It's a little bit silly, but the advantage of this, so here we have the title and here we have the description. So let's clean this, let's save this. Let's see if this thing works. Yay. So what we've done here basically is We've created, we've created the page 
And this function gets executed on build time. And what that function says, it says, you're gonna load that data from there. You're gonna iterate through all that stuff you want. And you're gonna create clones of myself for every, every piece of that data. So let's see how this looks on the file structure. I'm gonna do npm run build now. It's gonna give me some warnings. Did it? No. Why am I console login stuff? Anyhow, and let's go to the distribution folder. Now you see index pay index.html is static. The about us page is static, but inside posts, it has created a folder for each one of the IDs of the blog posts I created. And inside there, there's an index.html. So basically it said, you gave me the recipe on how to create everything. I went and created it. It's half eight, and I could be talking about this for another two hours. I don't think I should, and but I know that I haven't touched too much on partial hydration. I know I haven't shown you the very, very extremely sexy way on how CSS is scoped on a per component basis. Your mic is giving you away anyway. <laughs> the, the, the what, sorry, sorry? <laughs> mic is actually uh, drawing its last breath or something. <laughs> Is it? You, you oh, sound man. like, uh, yeah. I think I think Strato yours is not not uh, not Angelus. Oh come on! Oh <laughs> no, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. Airpods. 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 <laughs> Everybody is like there, there. There's loads of things to talk about here, but the <laughs> the exciting thing about this is that uh, it's it's simple. You you get to use. Sorry, let me just find my presentation. Where's my presentation? There we go. So that's it for me for now. Um, the exciting thing about this is that you get to use your JavaScript knowledge, you get to use your React and JSX every day in order to very quickly spawn as many HTML pages as you want. That's it for me. I'm going to stop sharing now. I hope you enjoyed it. Happy to answer any questions whatsoever. I um, I think that maybe we should do this. I think we, maybe we should move straight on to Stratos here. What about pages that require some interactivity like updating a counter like Vasily? Yes, this is all about partial hydration. The long and short of it is that you can import a React component and on the place where you import it, you add an extra attribute and you say, this needs to run on the client. And what it does is that the JavaScript inside that component is basically going to um, is basically going to execute on the client. Another thing you can do is if you really need to, for example, if you need to have, um, if you need to have a login section, so after you log in, you need to show a different menu. There are ways to do this, but it, it needs it needs some effort. Okay, remember, this is all about baking static HTML. If you want to have JavaScript, you can, and JavaScript that runs on the client. And if you want to have JavaScript that calls an API and does something, you can, but it needs to be componentized. It needs to be imported as a separate component, not Astro, as Vue, uh, React, Svelte, or Vanilla JS. And it needs to encapsulate all the logic for its own state. That, 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 that will work. Astro looks sexy. There's no way ID to complete this. What you write side, that's um, there is a way. You're absolutely right, Costadino. Uh, for VS Code, it works beautifully. All of you that use VS Code, the Astro language server is now concrete. It will give you everything you need. Agile, your nice. presentation was glorious. Yes, you thank have, you. have, I think, you managed to communicate your enthusiasm. I'm one hundred percent, maybe a thousand percent. Now it's time for start. I think, yeah. Strato, over to you. We're not hearing you, dude. What's happening? You're muted. <laughs> yeah, you're on mute again. You are muted, Strato. You are muted. You are muted, but but you're also enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're simply on mute. Just remove the the mute, and you should be okay. Well, famous last words. No, nope. <laughs> we cannot hear you. Yep, there we go. Go on. Collaboration, come again. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can hear you now. No. Yeah, we can, can hear you. Yes, but not through the... Yes, but not through the, the um...
By the way, Angel, have you used it in production? It's so disappointing. AirPods is so disappointing. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't, I have, have I used it in production? I've used it once to create uh, a series of uh, HTML pages that went in production. So it's like the HTML is in production, which is fine. I haven't, so the answer is yes, but with a caveat that I just use it as a tool to let me quickly write some, create some landing pages that I wanted to be internationalized. 